Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Ow. Okay, so today I'm gonna to be doing a little tutorial on how to put a genie or slash any synthetic wig you want into a ponytail. Now I know there's gonna be a pretty, uh, pretty highly sought after skill because everyone wants to put a fucking wig into a ponytail. But uh, I'm gonna show you how I do it, okay? Um, before we start though, a little bit of admin to do. So the last wig video I did, um, which so far out of my recent videos has been my most uh, viewed <laughs> video, I have not made any money on because I used the Wigs by Vanity jingle, which is ours, but it's copyrighted to Courtney on YouTube. And uh, so I've been in a copyright dispute with them. Like, and Courtney, both of us can't work it out. Anyway, I've not made a single dime from that video. Um, so this one, I hope I'm gonna make some money on. So I need you to do a few things. Um, you just sit there, you or this is, you don't have to do anything except give me your time, okay? I'm gonna do all the work for you. You're gonna get a fabulous free tutorial. And all you have to do is watch the ads, unless they're those really long five minute get rich quick ads, whatever, don't watch those ones. But if you know, if it's the short ones, just sit through them, you know, do me a favor, help a girl out. Um, like the video, subscribe to the channel and uh, share the video. Let's try and make this one, like, <laughs> let's try and recoup some of the costs from the last one that I haven't seen a cent of. Um, because I do love doing these videos and, um, and it's not about the money, but at the same time, I am a business person, I am a hustler and, uh, and I wanna, you know, be able to make more of these videos and um and they do take a long time and they are time consuming and um and i would like to earn money from them so all you got to do is watch the ads and share and like and uh subscribe <laughs> okay so let's get on to the video um so i'm using a genie in bombshell a genie in bombshell now you can do this method on any synthetic wig um although cheaper wigs tend to have less wefts in them um, at the back, which makes it difficult. These wigs have been specifically designed to have lots of wefts and lots of permatees in all the wefts at the back. So you can actually put them up. I actually, when I, when I designed these wigs, that was the goal. Um, that, was, that, that was what I was thinking of. So like, so, so you can see already, like even just pulling that up, we have a pretty good um, coverage there. Um, but we'll get to that soon. So I'm going to pin the wig in using some T-pins. Look, you know, I do this like a, like a YouTuber. Um, you can get T-pins online. All these things that you've, you've seen me using, like the tripod and the head, the stand, blah, blah, blah. You can find them all online. They're all, um, all on eBay. Just type in like hairdressing tripod or canvas wig block and you'll be able to find them fairly cheap. And if you're going to do wigs at home, you may as well just invest a little bit of money and get some, get some things. Don't be doing wigs on a broomstick and a foam head. You know, we're not cave people. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to, as always, just pin, making sure, obviously, always that the wig is even. And do that. I mean, I'm going to go through a few things because I may as well, okay? The, the basics, but always work in a mirror. Make sure your block's even, and then just get your, I actually can't see the mirror because the camera's there, but just, just get your fingers where, on the corners of the wig, and just make sure they're balanced, and then that will give you um, a nice, even uh, placement of your wig. I'm also make, uh, doing this wig, because it's gonna be quite fitted. I'm doing it on my block, my personal block, which is really old, and, um, I actually think I'm going to do a uh, tutorial on, so I need to replace this. This is like over, uh, over 10 years old. Yeah, like 15 years old. No. <sighs> yeah, it's, it's, it's over 10 years old um, and I need a new one. So I think we'll do a video at some point on how to create a customized block for yourself. But for now, we're using my old shaddy block. So I've got my pins in the front and the back. Now, depending on the size of your block, it is going to be tricky um, to get the right fit if your block's not the shape of your head because it's gonna be tight. You know, it's gonna be up and it's gonna be tight. So bear that in mind. So depending on the size of your block, don't pull the wig down too much because don't forget, if you pull it down too far, it's gonna bounce up and it's gonna be all baggy. You kind of want it to sit on the block comfortably, making sure that it's all even all the way around. 
Um, okay, so I've got four points of, of anchorage. And I'm going to do one more. Actually, I'm going to do two more. I lie. I'll do one up here, just the front there. And then I'm going to do another one here. In the center back. You can do more through here if you want as well. So you don't pull up, because as you pull, as you can see, that will expose. So let's let's do that. Let's do that. We may as well do it properly, huh? While we're here. Okay. I've got my wig pinned on. I'm going to separate the fringe. If you don't have a genie, if you're not working with a fringe, then um, just keep the front in one section. I'm going to keep that out. Okay. Now we're going to section from ear to ear. And when I say ear to ear, I mean the back of the... Um, the sideburn tab. I think tab's a technical term for wig constructions. Um, I'm gonna go back over and arcing back a little bit over the head because we don't need any of that out. Once you've got that, now just clip that out of the way. So you're not going to need that. The next step, the best tip when it comes to wig styling is working in sections. Because if you look at the entire head on its own, it's just like it's so much hair and we want lots of hair because that makes it a wig fabulous, you know what I mean? Um, but it can be a lot to deal with. So by removing sections means that you're working in smaller bits and you're not having to focus on the wig in its entirety, you can just work in little sections. So then we take another section out, the back piece, and um, leaving a ring around the edge. Okay, now that I have this, I've got my hair sectioned out, um, I'm going to start the magic, okay? I used to do this technique um, by doing a French roll um, because I, you know, didn't like the exposed wefts. Because if you, as you can see, if you brush it up, you know, you get these exposed wefts, which I hated. So what I would do is I would lay it down flat, covering up that, put into a French roll, and then doing the rest on top, um, which was quite limiting. It did work, but it was quite limiting. Um, and in recent years, I've been doing this new technique, um, which means you can put the whole thing up like a ponytail. So bear in mind that this will, it won't damage your wig, but the type of back combing that we need to do in this base is quite tight. So you're gonna have a lot of tight back combing through here, which may mean that for, you know, if you, if you wanna reuse the wig or repurpose it, um, it will require a bit of work to get it out. But look, it's underneath, you'll be fine. Just bear in mind, you know. Oh, and before we go any further, it is best to watch my previous uh, tutorial on teasing a wig, uh, how to tease a wig, I think it's called using a shazza because the brush through teasing technique that I use there and I show you how to do, we're going to be using here. So we start with our first section. And we get our trusty old texturizing powder, put that into the root. And then take the hair and back comb it in, back comb it down and through. Okay, because then I'll show you this. Because then what we want to do, we basically want to push enough hair to the base, because what we want is the teasing, the back combing, as you can see, to create a base and a layer that will hide the wefts and the base of the wig. So that's one step. So get another clip, put that aside. Take another section. Powder into the root and pull through. And when you're pulling through, your aim is to create a nice bed of back combing 
that will cover up that base. Okay, and those wefts. Now we don't want body. We don't want it to be big. We want it to be nice and flat and tight at the base. You will get some loops. Keep brushing them through. If you have to do this a couple of times to get what you need, then do that. And like I said, you will have a lot of backcombing in there, which you may not want, but that's what it takes. So now we get to the base, to the, to the edges, which is probably the most important part because that's what we see. Get your dusting powder in. And then, because you can see we want to cover this up any and any exposed areas from the wefts. You will get wefts, you will get exposed areas even when it's really dense like this. Now, being a bit more precise, and I'm making sure that I've got a nice base and then I'm gonna pull through. And then you can see when I lift it up that we get quite a nice little disguise. Okay, so that's section one. I'm gonna repeat this all around that exterior that I have separated out. So I'm gonna fast forward this, you can watch this in fast motion and uh, yeah, have fun. Are my shoulder pads sitting okay? I started to wear shoulder pads because um, I wore a midriff and I, oh, even though you can't, oh, you can't see my midriff, great. <laughs> I thought I would be sitting down and wearing a midriff. So I have to wear shoulder pads to balance out my gut, but that's fine. <laughs> you can't see it. Okay, fast forward. Hey, okay, so now we've got the entire exterior all uh, pulled through and back home. And as you can see, well, I hope you can, <laughs> I can't, <laughs> um, that it just covers up all this. We haven't, we're not finished yet, so don't worry. There's still a bit more to do, but you can see that we've got that up, but we're not seeing any holes or gaps from the wefts, okay? So, I don't like the uh, hard lines, so I like to pull some through even more, which we'll get to. But for now, that's that step done. Now we move on to putting it up into a ponytail, okay? So let's do that. Okay, we're back. I did just do a little, uh, let me just, let me just, am I in? We've got everything in, we've got the Barbies in, we've got the nice, you know, balance. Okay, um, yeah, I wanted to check to make sure the video was good. You know it is, oh my God. So, okay, we've got um, quite that, the, the next step, which is putting the hair into the ponytail. So we're gonna take out the clips we've got, still keeping that separate because that's gonna be, because it's, it's a two-step process to putting in a ponytail. So, Take out all the clips and we've got all this hair that's on top. Now you could do this if you are a bit overwhelmed with the amount. Actually, you know what? Let's let's do that as well. Let's take this out. Let's take that out, yeah. Those corners on the sides. So that way we can do the full the top and it could be all nice and smooth and even. Okay, so now I've got all the hair that's on top, and I'm going to just brush it up. You can do this in halves. Actually, should I show you in halves? Halves will be easy for you guys. I wanna make it easy for you guys. So let's do this. Let's break that in half again. So just split that literally in half. 
okay? Make these sections nice and neat. Clip the bottom half out of the way. Now, we have just this much hair remaining, which we're gonna work on. So let me just try and, I can't see because of the, make sure. after all that, you need to keep adjusting your block, making sure, always look in the mirror for your, for your guide to make sure you're even and balanced. Because if you don't do that, then you end up with like a ponytail on the side and you know, nobody wants that. Unless you do want that and then do that. So, think about where you want the ponytail. Do you want it high? Do you want it at the back? One thing to always consider is balance and um, weight distribution. Because we are going to be adding the genie topper onto the wig as well. So there's going to be quite a lot of hair and a lot of weight. And if it's too far back, it's going to weigh the hair back, weigh the wig back, and you're going to have to like put heaps of anchor points. And if you don't have hair to anchor into, you'll get slippage. So I always try and keep it nice and high on the head. Which is fairly easy to do because you've really, really, that mark there where you've split that is where you want the, uh, the ponytail to sit. Okay, now, just using dirty old uh, elastic bands because they've got great grip to them. Put that first section, actually, wait. This is gonna be visible. This is gonna, this layer is gonna be the final layer up here. So we let's, let's make that nice. We'll try to make that nice anyway. Okay, put the ponytail in. Now the beauty about doing sections is you get multiple bands in there. So A, that gives you more support with the ponytail, but it also allows you to build up the tension without interfering with the hair too much. Because now what we're going to do, we're going to go to the next ponytail. Well, actually before we do that, let's make sure that's in the center, that's even, and it is. But you see how I've got this little bit of slackness here? Don't make the mistake of pulling the hair and, and making it tight because this next technique is going to help you with that. Yeah, this ponytail has three components to it. So each layer of band is going to go beneath this layer and it's going to help tighten that and make that tension tighter without having to interfere with what you've done. So, lucky band on standby. Pull this up. And then join those two together. Now this band is going to go on and you're going to put this band underneath the last band. So each layer or twist of the band is going to go at the bottom of that band. Okay? And that is going to help push the tension down Okay, and you can see already we're getting more tension in there. If you wanted to, you could put another band in now and do that, repeat that same process and uh, make it even tighter. But for now, we're going to hopefully <laughs> um, have this layer come up and do that for us. So, so now it gets a bit tricky. This was easy because you don't see much of that. That's all underneath. But this part is the exterior layer and you're going to see that. So you want to be a little bit more precise. I like to start by just picking up each section and joining it into that. Just so I've got it in the right direction. Okay, once I've got that, you're taking your brush. Being careful not to interfere with that because that's going to be exposed. 
So just get the hair up and all in the right direction. Don't worry too much about neatness at the moment. We just want the wefts going in the right direction. I probably should have brushed out those ends first, actually, for you guys. Just so, once we get to this point, I'm not doing it, but I've got 26 years of experience in these hands, so I can do that. <laughs> okay. Now, just keep going and doing that, getting it all up and right. And then with your small tunnel, that's a bit messy, but never mind. Okay, that all looks relatively lovely. We're not finished yet though. So now we go through and make sure that we've got this Make sure that all this is covered so we're going to go through i'm going to push all that back coming down even more just to make sure we've got all that covered and then i like to pull bits through so we have a little bit of softness you know if this was a head of human hair you want all that to be really nice and neat and crisp up there and have the hairline exposed, but it's not, it's a wig. So we need to have a bit of illusion. And if you like, you get this point here where like, I've got, I can see a little bit of where, don't be afraid to go in and push that down even more. Okay, now we can do it all the way around. Okay, now we have that. Ooh. And now we can put the hair into a pony. Being careful to marry all the edges, remembering, remembering that this is the, uh, the exterior, this is what's going to be visible. So keeping it nice and smooth, marrying it all together. And then I'm going to do a little trick. I'm going to turn the, put the band and double itself. So I only have to do, because it will take a couple of bands to get this in. Putting it below the other bands.
being careful not to disturb the work you've already done. Okay, that is two. Ah, damn. I'm gonna do another one. This time I'm just gonna use the band in its single form. The reason why I doubled the band over for that one, uh, the first one was um, so I am putting the hair up and getting it contained in the place I want with sort of minimal distraction of the work I've done, if that makes sense. But now that that's up and in place, then I can just go through and I can start to build up that like normal. And I might do another band as well, just so there's lots of tension through here. Making sure the band is underneath. through, checking all my bits, making sure that all the permatease is all fluffy so we don't get any undesired effects. Okay, now that's up, just give it a little smooth all the way around. I am putting a, um, a topper on this, so I'm not too worried about it being perfect. If you have a long wig and you want it to be really nice and slick and sort of snatched, then you want all this to be really nice and really precise. So that is the ponytail. Now I'm going to give that a spray. And smoothle that down. And that is it for that part. Clips out of the way, being careful not to disturb too much of the, the base. Now with this stuff, I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna use a pair of thinning shears, thinning, thinning scissors, which you can get from like, I'm sure I've seen this like for pharmacies and Priceline and like cheap places, they don't need to be good quality. Um, if you're doing, you know, hair professionally, then you want them to be nice quality, but you don't have to. And this, if you use these to cut wigs, you don't get any lines and it's hard to make a mistake because you don't cut all the hair at one go. So just stick it in and then just go down. Get the longest bit. Yeah. Depending on how much hair you want there. Sometimes it's nice and put some rollers in there and have little curls, but you know, like, I'm just gonna like, just keep that. Just so it looks like, I mean, my hair does it like this, you know, it's kind of like that same, idea. Oh, I'm so out of breath. I'm talking too much. Okay. And there. So. No exposed webs. It's not perfect but you're a drag queen. Like, honey, they know you're not real. <laughs> <laughs> if you want the perfect ponytail, then go invest $5,000 in a custom made full lace 360 degree wig. <laughs> but this is the jam for us. Well, I do have one of those 360 degree wigs, but you know, <laughs> that's just me. So that's it. And now we move on to the next section, which is the topper. Okay, <clears throat> because I'm gonna put the topper on, I don't need any of this, so I'm going to put this away, put this out of sight, um, like I always do, and that is by plaiting it and creating a little bun. So, let's just do this. Doesn't matter what this looks like, it's all going to be hidden. Okay. Now, you can just pin this up if you'd like, but I like to fasten a little, a little bit more by putting a handed around it. 
so. And you have thousands of these, so I can. Uh, this will help it keep really secure and tight. And tight. Okay. And use a couple of nice, strong, big. Oh, ow, I can't do that with my hand. Pins, the three inch ones. And let's pin that in. But because you've got the net in there, you don't need a lot of pins because the net's holding it together. So this three will do. Okay, now. That's done. Now I could just put the topper on, just like that, wrap some hair around it and it's done. But I want this to be quite full and quite fabulous. So I'm gonna tease this on another block because I don't wanna disturb anything that I've done here. <clears throat> now, rather than just putting this on the block like you usually would um, and make it fit the block, uh, I'm going to pin it in a kind of somewhat similar configuration than I would when I dress it onto the, the ponytail, which means that I'm gonna just put it up a little bit. You can put some padding in there if you want to help keep that up, but I'm not gonna worry about that too much at the moment. You know, so basically, we're dealing with something that looks like that underneath. So when we do our back combing and our teasing, we've got a sort of a somewhat similar configuration. Okay, now we just go through and we just back comb that like we usually would. We'll fast forward all this. Okay, that's the piece done. Now join them together. Okay, so I have my little piece. I'm gonna give that another little brush to make sure it looks nice. And then I could add some wadding up here to make that even bigger, um, but I'm not going to. This is gonna be enough for me because I'm wearing this. This is for me. Okay, so now once again, taking your nice big strong pins again, you need strong pins. Otherwise, it's just not going to stay. Then you're going to place the wig, making sure your balance is correct, making sure you're even. And you're going to pop that over the bun, making sure the, these tabs are even as well. They're going to come up a little bit. Okay, now, with your pin, open it up, puncture through the top until you hear that click through and then go in and push it in that head. Oh, wait, there, we're in. Okay, do that around the top, puncture, and then slide.
Punk Shell? No, that's not Punction. No. Puncture. And slide. And make sure your pins go underneath the ponytail. Or into the ponytail. And that'll lock it in tight. Repeat that process all the way around. I know you're thinking that I've just put another wig on, so what's the point of putting a real ponytail? But it's that, that fantasy of having that, you know? You know, and I mean, this is just one way. This is what I'm doing with this wig, but that ponytail base technique can be used for so many things. Mitzis, they're great for mitzis. Also, it's great as well to have the base done really well, and then you can interchange this. You can take this off and you can do, put different pieces on using the same base. I do that a lot with, with wigs. Okay, well, look, that is basically it for the piece. Apart from the fact that we've now got some pins exposed here in that hairline. Now, what you can do is take some hair from underneath and like just wrap that around if you'd like. Or I'm going to leave it because I think I'm going to add a little something there later. Now, I am going to dress the front. Oh, that looks a bit shit. That's fine. We're not finished yet. We're not finished yet. Now dress the, the bang and the kiss curls just as you usually would, as with like just the teasing technique and then place it into place. Okay, so I've done this whole front without being able to see my symmetry because everything's blocking the, uh, the mirror, which has made it very difficult because my entire hairdressing training has been based on looking in a mirror. So anyway, that's, that's not perfect, but I'm gonna do it on myself, I think. When I put it on, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna refine that and finesse it on my head. Okay, so I have decided I'm going to put a hairband in it because um, I'm gonna wear it for a 60s look. I had the idea that I'd do like a makeup tutorial with a 60s eye, um, and I was gonna make a new dress and document that and do a video of that, but I've, I've got a cute little 60s dress in a little black and white. So um, I have found the fabric, the original fabric has some stuff, some some excess left, and, um, and I thought I would make it out of this. Magic. <laughs> Okay, so I'll cut a little piece of my uh, my fabric. I'm going to just really simply, very makeshift. Like I don't want this to be too permanent, you know what I mean? I'm just gonna pin it in oops, under here. I'm gonna wrap that around. Oh, that's nice. Gorgeous. Okay. Let's try it on. Okay, this is what it looks like. Now, I can't actually, <laughs> I can't see myself, so I'd have faith in the, uh, the process. Is it cute? I can't see. Is it cute? Okay, let me just pin this in. That's my pin curl. I'm just <laughs> trying to, to see. Oh my god, that's really cute. <laughs> I can't see though. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's pretty good. I'm kind of really happy with that. Oh, guys.
What? <laughs> oh yeah, that's really cute. I love that. I love that. Um, okay, well, that's it. That's my official tutorial on how to put a wig into a ponytail, a synthetic wig into a ponytail, and um, and dress a genie all in one. Look at that. Multitasking. Who said boys can't multitask? Um, so, guys, thanks for watching. I hope it helped. Hope it was educational. Hope it lets you get the most out of your wigs. Um, and um, don't forget to flick the subscribe button. Thanks for joining me. Bye. Wigs by Vanity. This is my wigs. I don't wear hair.